The following is a presentation of Nova Hackers. Brought to you by ComputeCycle. Yeah, when, when, uh, when I posted Nova Hackers, I was going to do a coffee talk. Craig emailed me and he's like, oh, are we going to do the same talk? Are you talking about quality of coffee? Yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm teaching everyone how to make crappy coffee. <laughs> <laughs> this is more about um, a, a, an interesting way that I figured out how to hook up uh, the coffee maker to an Arduino so Twitter can you know, turn on and off a coffee maker. So for the person that may have like the clover like coffee maker here in the back, I, I, I have a Keurig. I've got to just say, all right, I'm sorry. I like it. So I'm not a coffee aficionado. One of the things I want to do for this project, and I'll explain while well, it relates to Kaspersky, clearly this is not an antivirus talk at all, um, is they, I work on a team uh, with, um, with about 33 people. And what we do is uh, I'm on the global analysis and research team. There are 33 of us, and when we get stuff like what we call ice fog, Get, uh, flame, Gauss, and uh, Stuxnet. We figure out like what it does, like who it's targeting, and uh, uh, we try to figure out how we can tell the people who are the targets this is happening. And then who, if we find out by chance who wrote it, we try to give them like a gentle heads up, like you know, you some of your your digital weapons may have uh, been discovered. <laughs> we figured it out; it's out there. So that's what my team does. So four of us on this team had to do a presentation, mostly for PR purposes. So this is going to be fairly general, general technically. Um, we were challenged to do a presentation based on the Internet of Things. And um, I was asked if I could hack a refrigerator. Yes, yeah, and, and so I said, all right, well, I think that the budget for that's going to have to be about four or $5,000, you know, is, is that okay? And uh, well, the question was, well, how much is it going to cost and are you going to break it? And I said, I, I don't know. I can't guarantee that it'll be like in this one piece when I'm done. So we decided to do something for my, my topic that was a little bit easier. I got a $16 Black & Decker coffee maker and it's really hard if that broke. And I'll tell you, along the way, the process with that Black & Decker coffee maker, if it broke, it was like, you know, I'll go and get another one off Amazon. <laughs> No, it, it, it didn't get budgeted, so I really had to ratchet it down to $100. So this is, this is how uh, my $100 project came about. Someone else at the conference did stuff on um, like banking Trojans. Another one uh, did on wireless internet, like don't hook up or don't connect to wireless and airports. The stuff that people here, I think, pretty much generally know what that is, you know, with the risks of, uh, associated with that. So what I did is I gave this presentation, and we did it for, to a lot of people that were journalists and and we just discussed what could be a problem if you have stuff in your house that's hooked up. And mind you, after I did this project, I'm, uh, my boyfriend and I are now looking at Nest. We're trying to like figure out how Nest works, and it's, uh, there are a lot of things that are quite interesting about accessing them remotely. Okay, so I was going to do a demonstration, and not to feed into like uh, the, 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 the conference or the presentation that Sarah did on sexism, but I was going to make everyone coffee. I was, I was going to bring it right here and make everyone coffee, but um, it's not working right now, so I I have a video I'm going to show you, so I'm doing the demo that way. Um, and uh, one of the things that I was trying to explain is, is uh, with embedded devices, is did you know that these devices are in these? And I think everyone here does. Maybe not the one on the right, but the one on the left. I had to put in this outrageous car because I've actually seen these at Dulles Airport. They're pretty, uh, pretty amazing. But um, <clears throat> this one has embedded systems. All, your cars do. And actually, that was the last presentation I did with someone in this room about hacking car computers about, I think it was about a year and a half ago. So uh, what happens when your devices are connected on the internet? And when we were doing the car security, car hacking research, um, how the car connected to the phone, if there was something you could get onto the phone, malware, for instance, that we could push onto the car, that was one of the things that we looked at. Is that possible to do? How easy is it for anyone to do it? And what would you need to know about security if, for instance, you were one of the OEMs? You were designing these cars that were supposed to be easy, ease of access to access you know, everything on your phone, your contacts, your music, stuff like that. Um, medical device is true, but one thing that I wanted to look at was what about with a coffee maker? Now my crappy $16 one is not an embedded device, so I kind of made the coffee maker an embedded device. But I did that by uh, the Arduino, but clearly it wasn't embedded. 
Um, I used an example of all of the all, all the things that go on in some of the high-end cars right now, but it isn't just high-end cars, because if you look back, this article was written in 2009. Um, you get a lot of cars on the low end, such as Ford Sync is a very interesting one that's been getting a lot of um, discussion recently about how much you can access in the car. What would you be able to do with a lot of these devices? So one of the things that Kaspersky, uh, my group, tasked us with is, you know, what could we hack in the real world? Cars were being done, and they're being done right now. I couldn't do the fridge because that was expensive, and I was afraid I was going to break it. And uh, although I sure would have liked to have even kept the broken, like three thousand dollar fridge, but uh, actually that's closer to four. That that's an excellent fridge. But you can access Facebook and Twitter on the fridge. <laughs> what I wanted to figure out was, what if could you access your refrigerator remotely? And that question, I don't know, but. Uh, so I moved on to something, so what I could do. Um, someone else gave a presentation at this. Um, Kurt Baum Gum, uh, Baumgartner did a presentation on um, unprotected wireless networks in San Francisco. And this was something we pulled on the date in September. But there were a lot that you could just get right on. There was no password required. So if these are people's houses and they have stuff like Nest or a coffee maker like this, what kind of badness could we do? And this is part of what our group looks at is the threat landscape. What could we do? So um, what I wanted to figure out is, could we, could we hack my coffee maker? And how, how easy that might be. So I, I was going to make coffee using Twitter. So I don't have the demo. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the video. And I did this video just in case, like, um, the day before the presentation, <laughs> if everything went wrong for PR, I was going to pull up this video and show it to them. Because uh, there was a, <clears throat> a lot to, we took to get here, actually. Um, it was uh, this, we had something called a power switch tail, and you'll see it in, in this. Um, and I'll describe to you a little bit about how it, like, it went through two fires and a flood. And I got to the presentation in San Francisco, and, uh, and it, was, it had burned up in Africa. So I'll tell you a little bit about the story. Let me show you the video. But this is more like a presentation about uh, what it takes when you're trying to do demos and figure out how things work. I am not a hardware engineer. So this was all new to me. And uh, so I went ahead and said, all right, I'll, I'll see what I can do and what's possible with this. So <clears throat> here's the video. Sorry, it's blurry. Um, again, this was like a last minute type of like, if it doesn't work, I want to take this video. But instead of looking at the screens, I'll show you more about what it does. So what I did is I set up a Twitter account. And what I'm doing now here is I'm telling my t the Twitter account, make coffee. And the name of the Twitter account is make underscore coffee. So there is the $16 coffee maker. That is the power switch tail. And there's the Arduino right there. And what I'm doing is when the Twitter account, when it receives a, any type of command, make coffee, stop making coffee, uh, anything like that, it'll, it'll start. And what it does is it turns on the coffee maker, and you can hear it. I can hear it, but you can't hear it. It's beginning to, to make the coffee. <clears throat> and when I, if I were to do this over again, the problem I had with this coffee maker is when I looked on Amazon, it looked like it had a toggle switch like those old ones for the 90s, but it had a spring-loaded switch. So the duct tape on the front is I had to duct tape the switch in the on position. So there are a lot of like fire hazards with this project. Yeah. And <laughs> And yeah, I'll tell you, we, we, <laughs> we actually had a bit of a problem in a hotel in Africa with it, but <laughs> it's one of these things I was traveling, I'm like, oh, the deadline's coming up for this presentation. So uh, my boyfriend and I went to Africa uh, for a project, and I brought this with me, and we're in this like gorgeous five-star hotel in, um, in Ghana. And we were arguing over whether this plug to fit into the plugs there was actually like an inverter or if it was just one of the things that changed the shape of the plug. So I'm like, it doesn't matter. The code's not working. Just, just plug it in. <laughs> we weren't sure if the code was, was going to work. We plugged it in. And there was this explosion in the lobby and fire. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and, and there was some guys that got in on YouTube. So if anyone can find me in Africa catching this thing on fire, I'll give you 20 bucks, but it's out there somewhere. But these guys started videotaping us as we're like, unplug it, turn it off. But it was already on and going. But we definitely blew out some fuses in this really, really nice hotel. But we wanted to say we're American. I've done this with hair care you know, products like blow dryers, but I've never done it with this. But it, it, 
it kind of looks like it's you know a little bit concerning if you saw these you know people plugging this stuff in in a hotel lobby. So, um, <laughs> all right. So this is how this this product works, and I'll tell you now from the presentation how I got this, where where to get this code, and what kind of work I think it needs to. Uh, to actually be something that would be, um, oh, sorry, that would be very useful. Um, it's not as useful now because the code actually times out. I figured this out the hard way um, when I plugged in my uh, my crock pot because I'm like, this is great. Like my crock pot was an old school one that didn't have a timer on it, and I'm like, I'd like to be able, as I'm heading home from work, just to be able to say, turn crock pot off, tweet to this account, and have it shut off shut off the crock pot. But uh, when I actually came to look at the crock pot, it was still on because the code had timed out. And uh, so this, this code is not exactly like uh, something that you could put in a product and sell. So, so don't even try it. But here it is, the $16.60 coffee maker. I would get one with a different button if you want to do this. Now, mind you, this can be anything. And this is the point I tried to get through to the press when we did this presentation. It could be a crock pot. It could be a garage door opener. It could be anything that the convenience of being able to say to a Twitter account, turn this, <coughs> excuse me, turn this device on. So um, a space heater was another one. Um, so <laughs> another one of the ones I'd be concerned about, the fire concerned about the this project but the um, the Arduino was 24 bucks the power tail now that one I had two because um, one power tail blew up in Africa and so the day before the presentation I had to uh, we ordered another one from Maker Shed and had to like FedEx it next day to San Francisco and then the a person in this room I, I sent it to his apartment and they'd had a fire in the building that day so I was like this project is doomed to like this demo is not gonna work yeah, there. <laughs> this, I mean, with fire and, and all that, and also I was in a grass hut in Africa when the we discovered grass huts don't really keep rain out. So the power tail switch and the Arduino got rained on as well. So it's actually quite amazing when I finally got to San Francisco to do this. It got done and it worked. So I was like, all right, that's it worked. And, it, what is that? <laughs> and the, actually, the coffee it makes is terrible. It really is. It's, sorry, that's why I put a sticker over the Black & Decker when I did this for the press. But um, the coffee was pretty bad. So if you do go to Instructables, so if you look up on Instructables, like tweet a pot, uh, the code is there. Um, you'll need a little bit of experience like reading and writing the code. Um, it does not work with newer versions of Python, just a heads up on that. Um, and maybe a lot doesn't because that's what I've been, I, I guess we've, we've heard about with Python. It's not as good backwards compatible. Um, go get the tweet pod from Instructables. And again, you don't have to coke a coffee maker up to this. Anything you could think of that the convenience with Twitter, I thought, was what was interesting about this to me. This is what the full setup looks like. The power tail switch, again, is um, <laughs> that was the most delicate. I, I have duct tape on it for the demo, too, because I got to San Francisco and I didn't have those little screwdrivers for eyeglasses, because you got to put the, um, the two cords into it. It's pretty much just an on-off power switch. So a lot of duct tape, a lot of um, kind of working through uh, what hardware engineers must go through every day. I have a lot of respect for people that put together these, these products and get all the bugs out of them. The bugs are not all out of this one, but um, I'd hope to explain to the journalists that uh, there's a lot in people's houses that's hooked straight up to the internet. People's Wi-Fi isn't password protected. And one of the things I did for this Twitter account, and I know Password Hacker is in this room, um, but one of the things I'd done is I'd set up a very easy password uh, for the Twitter account. And um, <laughs> I was in Iceland giving a presentation, and one of the journalists wrote about this and said yeah and she has this really easy password she says set up on the Twitter account and um, that's when I kind of freaked out and said oh my gosh I follow Eugene Kaspersky my boss you know on this account so I quickly went in and made it a better password but I tried to educate people on the need for having a very complicated pass phrase especially for your Wi-Fi if you have stuff like this sitting around in your house um, just getting people more aware of better security practices and and having a project like this it, it looks very rudimentary but it was a very basic explanation of this is what you can do so that's why some of the journalists thought this was it was a lot of uh, fun to see me trying to trying to get this thing work working as well <clears throat> 
So um, yeah, this is the hangups. That's my work phone. I was that's my internet connection, and that's look. See the plug. The green light was on. This is in Africa, and we're like, oh, that's okay. The green light's on. It must be working, because we're such brilliant, you know, engineers. We, <laughs> if the green light's on, it's all go. But uh, now that's where we had the fire and lost the first power tail switch. So um, <clears throat> this is the account I set up. You can follow it, but it doesn't do much, especially I thought it would be doing something today and it's not. But all I do is I send a tweet, any word, to make coffee. Um, oh, and I got to put in the hashtag. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. I had to put a hashtag in for it. Um, and then it makes the coffee. So if you look on the account, you can see it. I, I follow, it's telling me to follow Kevin Mcnick and H.T. Moore, and, and uh, it totally looks like a bot, so I don't, um, I don't actually. <laughs> It, you see, I, it, if you can get into the account, you can. Now, that's not a challenge, but... <laughs> I did, I did. No, I'm kidding. Um, it has a very good password on it now. At least, okay, now I'm going to probably regret I said that. <laughs> but uh, this was the Twitter account I set up for it. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so as N, of course, there is... There is um, I don't know, I guess following after what you said, Mubix, don't hack my coffee, but um, it really was more about don't hack, don't hack my type of stuff in my house if I don't have passwords on my Wi-Fi and everything's connected and my nest is connected, all of that. So um, <laughs> if you have any questions, you can email me, but I don't do this full time with the hardware hacking. So, uh, and I definitely want to answer any questions about good coffee because as I learned from the last presentation, I don't know what good coffee is apparently. I, I have the Keurig, right? So, um, but anyway, this is what I did and it's kind of fun and the great team does some pretty fun projects and I've enjoyed having the leisure to actually do this um, for the, the global analysis and research team. This isn't um, something I did at my last job. It's just like, let's see if we can build it. So I, I, I give a lot of kudos to my company for letting us just experiment and stuff that is totally outside of our field just to see if we can do it. So anyway, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. But uh, are there any questions on the, the Instructables or the Tweetapot? This has been a presentation of Nova Hackers, brought to you by ComputeCycle, a Cranial Thunder production.